And so all I have to do is follow these instructions and I will get there. Because this is actually how the spiritual master works. The spiritual master knows the path. He has walked it himself. And so he will give the instructions to the student uh, in the proper way at the right time. He'll put the student in the proper frame of mind with different devices and different tests. Uh, this is all very complicated business, but you don't have to know anything about it. All you have to do is follow. And they will automatically get the results. Mm, what is the process? It says here, number four, following in the footsteps of great acharyas under the direction of the spiritual master. So the great acharyas are all the spiritual masters going all the way back to Krishna. And those spiritual masters have given their examples to show how to follow this process of devotional service, how to execute devotional service favorably, and so on. So if we follow their examples, we live the kind of life that they lived, and we perform similar activities, then we'll certainly uh, make advancement and eventually get the result with the help of the spiritual master. Because item number five is inquiring from the spiritual master how to advance in Krishna consciousness. So we don't assume that we know, or we don't assume that uh, we can interpret the scriptures properly. We inquire from the spiritual master to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Huh? This is a very important point. Not that we just say, okay, um, here's some instructions in these books, and I'm just going to follow it. Because sometimes an instruction will be appropriate for the time, place, and situation, and sometimes it won't. So one should inquire, be a little bit cautious, go to the spiritual master and say, is this all right? Should I be doing it like that? Or should I do it in some other way? And the spiritual master, of course, will give uh, appropriate guidance. Number six, being prepared to give up anything material for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. What do you want? Huh? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be uh, an eternal associate of Krishna? Then you're going to have to give up everything material. Hmm? you're going to have to uh, transfer your existence to the spiritual world. So naturally, everything that we're attached to in this material world, it's temporary anyway. We're going to have to give it up anyway. So it's only a question of when, under what circumstances, and like that. We're going to have to give up everything in this material world. Mm -hmm. So if we give it up in such a way... Um, that it becomes an offering to Krishna, then that's the ideal thing. Uh, we're attached to so many different forms of material sense gratification, for example. Especially in the Western countries, we've been riding on this bubble of uh, free, almost free energy from petroleum. But that's over now. Huh? That's really, really finished. So we're going to have to go back to a sustainable way of living, which means we're going to have to give up a lot of our perks and privileges and uh, kind of uh, opulences that we're used to. So uh, we're going to have to do this anyway. Well, why not do it as part of the devotional service of the Lord and get some spiritual advancement from it? This renunciation also applies to our sinful activities. These aren't enjoyments. They're actually suffering hmm? because they cause great suffering in the future. So we should give these up and we should also accept things that we might not ordinarily accept. Living in a community of devotees has its austerities. Uh, we have to deal with so many different personalities, but this is good for us. We learn about different kinds of relationships that way. Number seven is residing in a sacred place of pilgrimage like Dwarka or Vrindavan. Maybe everybody won't get the chance to go to India and actually reside in Vrindavan 
or Dwarka or any of the sacred places of Krishna's actual pastimes. But one can reside in a temple or a community of devotees where there are devotional activities going on 24 hours a day. And that's just as good. Srila Prabhupada had this vision of new Vrindavan. He wanted to transplant the lifestyle of Vrindavan to the West. So he created many communities like New Vrindavan, New Dwarka in Los Angeles, New Jagannath Puri in San Francisco, and so on. And so Srila uh, Prabhupada was a pioneer in establishing new holy places. And we can also do that through our activities. If devotees take a place and they sanctify it by spiritual activities, that becomes just as good as the original Vrindavan, because Krishna is there. Remember in Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, Krishna says that the all-pervading transcendence is eternally present in acts of sacrifice. So if we perform many acts of sacrifice in a place, it sanctifies the atmosphere, and it becomes just as good as the spiritual world. Number eight, is accepting only what is necessary or dealing with the material world only as far as necessary. So this means we don't take on some big complicated business uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, we want to spend most of our time or as much of our time as possible in chanting and studying. And then if only if there's a necessity do we go out and deal with the material world? Uh, like we have to go to the store and get food. And we're trying to even cut that out and just raise our own food. <laughs> so gradually a devotee comes to uh, minimize his dealings with the material world. He doesn't seek any material um, advancement or benediction. He only wants devotional service, so he only acts when he has to act to execute some order of the spiritual master or to maintain his community or something like that. He doesn't act uh, whimsically or independently to go out in the material world and become a great something or other, <laughs> musician or authority or something. No, he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't need to do that. He only wants to engage in chanting the holy name. Uh, our, our real goal is to chant the holy name 24 hours a day, waking and sleeping. Uh, so anything that gets in the way of that is considered an obstacle to devotional service and must be dispensed with as quickly as possible. So we don't get entangled in the material energy. In fact, we try to minimize so the ninth is observing the fasting day on Ikadashi. On Ikadashi, it's a good day to just kick back and chant all day, as far as possible. This is the best way to spend the Ikadashi day. And ten, worshiping sacred trees like the banyan tree and especially the Tulsi tree. Um, people in the West often don't get it, but the Tulsi tree is the worship of the Tulsi tree is extremely important to the development of devotional service. And um, the hymns and prayers that are offered to Tulsi are no exaggeration. They're not just flattery. They're actually factual. You can overcome so many sinful reactions just by worshiping Tulsi and actually develop the highest, uh, highest flavor of love of God by her blessings. So, the next set of instructions is listed as follows. One, one should rigidly give up the company of non-devotees. Two, one should not instruct a person who is not desirous of accepting devotional service. Three, one should not be very enthusiastic about constructing costly temples or monasteries. Four, one should not try to read too many books, nor should one develop the idea of earning his livelihood by lecturing on or professionally reciting Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. 5. One should not be neglectful in ordinary dealings. 6. 
one should not be under the spell of lamentation in loss or jubilation in gain. 7. One should not disrespect the demigods. 8. One should not give unnecessary trouble to any living entity. 9. One should carefully avoid the various offenses in chanting the holy name of the Lord or in worshipping the deity in the temple. 10. One should be very intolerant toward the blasphemy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or his devotees. Without following the above-mentioned ten principles, one cannot properly elevate himself to the platform of sadhana bhakti, or devotional service, in practice. Altogether, Srila Rupa Goswami mentions twenty items, and all of them are very important. Out of the twenty, the first three, namely accepting the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, taking initiation